Today's tutorial is really about seeing if I can take the Dina Wakely gloss sprays, treat them like a can of spray paint, but have a little more painterly control over them. You do get some interesting looks and they are perfect for this project. Hey Chickies, if you're new here, I'm Ingrid, welcome. I did approach this project with a little bit more intention, but of course, I had a few hiccups along the way. Let's dive right in. I've kind of been on a space kick lately, a lot of galaxy cards, and I've done that with ink blending, I've done it with watercolor, you know, different types of mediums. But I had yet to really play with acrylic paint. And I thought these sprays might be interesting in when trying to create a card. I am looking to create like a gassy looking planet, kind of like Jupiter, you know, in space with infinite amount of stars. Just really kind of have that contrast. The bright acrylic paints are the perfect medium to try it with. The real problem is I wanted to maintain some sort of control. And when I think of control, sprays are the last thing that I'm really thinking of using. This tutorial is really kind of like an experiment. I wanted to see could I control the amount coming out? Because it's not dye. It's not just water that just gets soaked into whatever, you know, surface you're spraying it onto. This is paint. So that instantly makes it different. I knew that I wanted to definitely give it a go. So thinking like canned spray paint, I fired these three colors, lemon, fuchsia, and ocean, like I would a can of spray paint. Quick, short bursts sweeping across the card. That's really the look that I was going for. The key here really is to choose colors that aren't gonna create mud. So, you know, no compliments on the color wheel. There are a few things that happen that I definitely want you to be aware of as you're watching this footage. One, overspray. You'll definitely get overspray as you see here on the lemon color. So when you have a light color like that and you're laying fuchsia down, it's definitely gonna be helpful to come back in with the lemon a second time. Two cells emerge. These sprays are water-based, so they react differently than normal acrylic. As they soak into your paper and start to set, when you add more on top, the bottom layer starts to resist the new medium that's being laid down on top. And that's when you see those cells emerge. Anywhere that is overwhelmed with moisture will just allow that color to sit. The cool thing is, is that it's acrylic. So when it's over a dried area, you really see that true color because it's literally sitting on top. Now, if any part of the underneath color is still wet, that's when those colors will start to blend. That's where you definitely want to avoid compliments. Yellow and purple, for instance. I have yellow and fuchsia, and fuchsia leans a little more towards the red side, and that is why when they blend together, they create a beautiful orange. Let's go back to blending. When your paint is wet, you can definitely control it. I wanted to create a swirl or drip-like look. The paint needs to be fluid to do that. Once you're happy with how it looks, either set it aside to dry, which Dina recommends because acrylic is basically plastic. I did it a little differently. Okay, I'm a little impatient and that's really a large part of it, but I did test this out both ways. I laid a couple pieces off to the side to dry and I also did this with using a heat tool. I made sure to use the heated tool versus an embossing gun, which is gonna blow in a direction. To my own personal naked eye, I couldn't really see a massive difference. So for me, personally, I'm good heat setting it. I definitely encourage you to try it both ways, especially since they really come out and say that they recommend that you allow it to air dry. For this particular project, I really wanted to create that planet-like look. So I used some circle dies to create not just a mask, but also help me visualize exactly where I was gonna have my planet. I wanted to have the coolest part of it be the planet. Of course, also thinking of design and rule of thirds and those types of little things. Always thinking of those types of little things. Now, since this is acrylic paint, you know, I have to be careful about what I'm using to create my space part of the project. I figured, why not layer more acrylic on top? Out comes my trusty Jelly Arts gel plate. I love a gel plate because I can create a one layer print and that's really kind of what I wanted. I didn't want to cut out my planet and layer it on something else. I wanted the entire thing to flow and just be one sheet. Mars black, acrylic paint, that's definitely <laughs> sounds like a good choice. 
When you're brayering out the black, you want to make sure that you're getting an even layer. I always pounce my brayer up and down a bit. That way I can avoid making those weird kind of oblong circles and I have a nice even look to my print. Now, of course, I got impatient and I pulled my print too early. Here I decided to pull it up right away and of course I paid the price. The paint wasn't completely dried. It hadn't dried to the layer underneath, the gloss layer. When I pulled it up, I still had some yellow in future there. That's okay. It's not the end of the world because I can just lay my mask right back over my planet and do this a second time. And of course, perfect results there. Look at that contrast. There isn't a black spray out there, but that wouldn't have really worked anyway. Pulling with a gel plate was the only thing that made the most sense. It's a space card, so stars are needed. And although there isn't a black, there is a white gloss spray. If you ever want to create stars and snow on any project, you want the white. Here's why. One, it's acrylic, so it will sit on top and not show the layer underneath it. Two, I won't ever have to touch it. After shaking it up a little bit, I tap the spray thingy. I know, highly technical term. And three, because it's fluid acrylic, it's perfect. There's no need to water it down. You get the perfect small and large stars. The white spray gloss gives you everything you could possibly want and ease of application. And while I absolutely love the way that this project turned out, these sprays are not for everyone. There are definitely some pros and cons to creating with them. Meet me here in this video and I'll explain.